let's talk about now folks who are self-medicating. In other words, you're not going to go to the doctor every time you've got right. a migraine. Is there a process for monitoring the use of right. these drugs well, or, or the and, misuse of these drugs? And as was said, that's what you want is for them to self-medicate. You want them to take it when the pain comes on. So you certainly don't want them to have to come see the doctor every right. time or right. to go to the emergency department. And this is a big cause of emergency department visits. So, okay. so we do want folks to have this very helpful medication on their shelves at their, right. at their disposal. As a patient advocate, you need to explain to people who have migraine and their care caregivers exactly the uh, protocol for managing your disease at home because like diabetes we have to make our decisions on the fly and uh, take care of our own take charge of our own health when you look at emergency rooms they're bright noisy and smelly all due to respect um, and no, I think we've all been in emergency. Sure, and, and, and just and, not um, migraine friendly. Yeah, exactly. Patients are sensitive to light. They're sensitive to sound and sensitive to smells. They're sensitive to moving them about. So the emergency rooms are just about the worst place in the world you'd send a migraine patient unless you wanted to sort right. of torture them. <laughs> are we what, worried? What I tell people is to avoid going to the ER to have a plan with your physician. And then if you inevitably do have to go to the ER, bring something with you that the physician has written out a protocol that they can use in the ER. Because unfortunately, not all ER physicians are experts in migraine and their treatment. And that's why we're doing this today. Now, is there a concern mm -hmm. that patients are just gobbling up over-the-counter medications on their own and not really getting the help that they need and can get if they were more integrated? Um, when I found out what the discussion points were on there Monday. There are discussion points? Yes, there <laughs> okay. are. I uh, did a quick and dirty survey uh, using social media. I had 140 responders in 48 hours, which I think is pretty good. Thank you, everyone. And um, most people are worried about um, medication overuse. They're very cognizant of uh, monitoring the use of their their medications and uh, keeping track but, of how many they're but using. But does that mean, because they're worried about overuse, that they're under medicating and they're suffering unnecessarily? I guess that's a yes. Boy, this is a real, right. a real paradox. It's a complex thing because, yeah. the, because the person has to function. They've got their life. They need to get to the studio and have a chat. So at one level, telling them not to take something when they're in a difficult situation is difficult. At the other level, we know that a proportion of people who do that will make their headache worse. We know that the overuse rates in the, in the US are about nudging about 1% of the entire population. Okay. 1%. 1%. That's, that's a lot of people. That's 30 million people, <laughs> give or take, right? That's 10%. That's 10%. That's right. That's a lot more. <laughs> Three million people. Yeah. But it's still a lot, it's a lot of people. Check. <laughs> I think one of the it's things that I think it's helpful, though, in that, at least for migraines and maybe compared to some other conditions, is that, you know, the medications that are very effective are not the medications that folks tend to abuse, so like the opiates. So those are fourth line, fifth line. Those are not what we would necessarily okay. give right away for migraines. And, and those do have a lot of abuse potential, and we keep our eyes on those. So is the Well, triptans have the medication overuse potential. Um, there's very good data in the U.S. population that if you, ta if you take triptans on 12 days or more per month, then you then you're increased risk for having more headache in the following 12 in the following 12 months. So they're, they're, they're nothing at the moment we have is uh, clean as the driven snow when it comes to medication so overuse. What, what is our biggest concern here? Is it medication overuse among patients or is it underutilization of medication by patients? Well, I think the biggest problem is under management because if you, if you need to take um, a, an acute medicine more than say once a week, um, then you need to be having a discussion about prevention. And so we're talking about when people are already well out of hand that needs to be gotten a hold of much earlier. The message to doctors and patients has to be once, once, the num once the number of attacks are starting to escalate, that's the time to talk about prevention. So let's talk about guidelines, because I mean, everybody's got guidelines for everything in medicine. My desk is this high in guidelines I'll never get to. Um, what are the most recent American Academy of Neurology and American Headache Society clinical guidelines for migraines? The most recent guidelines from the Academy and the American Headache Society date back around to the Triptan era. Um, 
we're as a society revising them at the moment as the new therapies uh, are coming out. But the guidelines will tell you um, that, uh, for example, the triptan use it needs to be limited, and we use um, we use a recommendation of less than 10 dose days um, per month to try and avoid this medication overuse problem um, for acute therapies. We we're, rec we're not very keen on opioids, as has already been said, because of the potential for medication overuse problems and the potential for addiction and abuse problems. I had heard that, that opioids don't work very well anyway. Mm -hmm. They don't work very well. So it's a, it's a, it's a triple play, yes. if you will. If you compare them to, uh, if you compare opioids to uh, much simpler therapies, they actually, they actually underperform in randomized controlled trials. And can precipitate uh, going into chronic uh, chronicity. And I don't even want to discuss what someone withdrawing from opioids with migraines must feel like. Let's, let's avoid this altogether.